Welcome to Deep Shadows, an eclectic full-contact theater audio drama series written by Aaron Mays and Colette Cullen. Please like, follow, subscribe, or drop a review anywhere you listen to podcasts. While investigating the suspicious death of a former client, dedicated social worker Joelle Franklin battles corruption, classism, and a broken, underfunded system while also dealing with the strains the investigation places on her family and loved ones, including girlfriend Siobhan and her brother Michael, a Cook County Sheriff. How far will Joelle push, and what will she sacrifice to get to the truth? This is Deep Shadows. Oh, shit. What? Bloody hell. (laughs) That bad? My landlord is converting my studio into a condo. You would think that after five years of paying rent, that he could have stopped by to tell me, or at least wrote me a letter. When it comes to business, people have no heart, just deep pockets. He sends me a cowardly text. The bastard. Can they even do that? Can they just move you out without much notice? Pretty much. Welcome to the American real estate market. The piece of shit. Let's look for a new place. There has to be something reasonable just around the corner. Yeah, reasonable if you double my income. Uh, The rent can't be that high. Don't believe me. Do a quick search. Okay. Typing now. You see? My walk-in closet is bigger than some of these places. That's all you have to say? What do you want me to say? You're not outraged? I could break something, if you want, but that doesn't prove anything. You've got to be rational. And you still have time. It says here you have 60 days before you need to move out. You can easily say that because you have your own place. You don't have to think about how much it will cost to move all your things. The money you lose from taking off work to coordinate the move or how much you'll need to save for the security deposit. Siobhan, calm down. I think you're being a bit drastic. It's not like you're getting tossed out into the streets. It's not like you're living (sighs) hand to mouth. You wouldn't know that. You don't make room for me to talk about stuff like that. I think I should go. Don't leave. I just wish you'd be a bit more supportive. Instead, I feel you're ready to brush me off any time I mention anything difficult about my life. I don't see it that way. You deal with people's problems at work all day. I get it. I don't want to be a burden, but I think I should be able to share stuff like this. And you can. You really feel like a burden to me? I should go. Siobhan, wait. Don't look for a new place. You can move in with me. I've got plenty of space in the basement for your fancy cameras and film stuff, even a studio. You don't have to answer now. Just think about it. Okay. I will. So the two of you are moving in together. That's good. Yeah. Cheer up. This is what you wanted. Is it? Yeah, of course. Everyone wants romance under their roof, especially one that two people can share. I think it'll be more complicated than sharing space, Marion. Oh, I sense there's something deeper brewing. Sounds like we need to get drinks later. I finally told Joelle that I need more support from her. And you're having second thoughts? I get it. You think she only offered you her place to appease you. I don't want to think that. But that's exactly what you're thinking. You're right. I just feel like shit about it. But part of me feels like I should just get my own place. You know, don't fix what isn't broken. Moving in with anyone, whether it's a new roommate or boyfriend, is always a big leap. At some point, you and Joelle will have to see if living together will make sense. Think of this situation as a litmus test for compatibility. So where do you want to meet? Hey, Nevin. Good morning. I'm heading out for some coffee. Want some? 
No, thanks. But I may need something else. You need a favor? Yes. You want to know how I know? Actually, no. Every time you ask me for a favor, your eyes sparkle. <laughs> they sparkle? Yeah, like twinkle, twinkle. My eyes don't twinkle or sparkle. Sure they do. If you want, I can use my iPhone and I can film you asking me. But that isn't necessary, Nevin. Yes, sure, you're right. What's up? Charmaine Smith. I need to get her files from the archives in DCSF. I couldn't find everything in our online records, so I'm thinking that everything wasn't digitized. And why can't you go to the archives? Because Rita told me not to. But she didn't say that you couldn't do something. Some digging on my behalf. Just make sure that Rita doesn't find out. In short? Don't get caught. Snitches get stitches. I'll let that one slide. Do you think you can check the files after your coffee run? Coffee cream and archive digging. Nevin, a little louder for the rest of the office to hear. Off I go. I'm looking at these budget cuts, and I'm trying to figure out how to be able to make ends meet. I'm going to need more than promises and policies to run this agency. I hear you. I really do. If the county is really concerned about vulnerable populations, then it will find the money. That means no new stadiums, no new fountains in the suburban parks, or pedestrian bridges to the lake. That also means tax hikes, which taxpayers don't want, no matter how vulnerable people might be. What am I supposed to do? We're talking either less staff or less services or a combination of both. I don't know. I'm not running this department. That's just it. I am. I feel like I'm being asked to put out a fire with a teaspoon of water. People will be pointing fingers if problems stem from DCSF's lack of oversight. But we need the county's support to ensure no one falls through the cracks, especially ones that are made by budget cuts. If it was your child, wouldn't you want the same thing? I don't have any children. I can't relate. That's unfortunate. Or maybe it's a good thing for the kid's sake. Okay, snapping at me won't help at all. I suggest you check your tone and your attitude. You expect me to sit here and be mute? I'm trying to keep things together with duct tape, basically, and you're acting like this is business as normal. And what about the Smith case? What can you tell me about that? I can give you an update later, and I can relay your concerns about the budget at the next county board meeting. I need answers today. Not in two weeks or months from now. We've got people's jobs on the line and a dead woman in the morgue. Like I said, I can send over updates when I can. I'm realizing I'm doing all the talking. Why are you being so evasive? Look, we all have a role to play. My job is to protect the interests of the county. Your job is to protect children. The Smith case is not a problem of yours or the county's. So move your focus. You have enough to worry about. She's already dead. Nothing is going to change that. Hey, Joelle, I looked for you around the office. Where are you? I'm on my way to Detective Wallace. Okay, I got you a coffee anyway. I'm not sure if you take cream and sugar or just cream or just sugar. Do you like milk in your coffee? A little cafe con leche? I wasn't sure if you had changed your mind while I was away. No, haven't changed my mind. I went to that Cuban coffee spot. Some of the best coffee in town. And the empanadas and the Never? sweets. Yeah? The archives. Yeah, what about it? Did you go? Of course. I know how to follow instructions. I made that my first stop so the coffee didn't get cold. <sighs> That's very thoughtful. So, what did you find out? After you were reassigned to a different case, Charmaine bounced to a few different homes in the city. It looks as if her folks at her last placement, her foster parents died. First the dad, then the mother, right around the middle of high school. Was there some kind of accident? The files didn't say. They died six months apart from one another. The notes say she was a bright kid. Yeah, she was. She was one that sparkled without having to ask for a favor. What else did it say? After her foster parents died, she was moved to Prospect Heights Community Housing. If she died in her apartment, she more than likely died there. Nevin? You need another favor? I need you to find out who's in charge of Prospect Heights. I want to find out who was overseeing the property while Charmaine was a resident. 
and make sure that Rita doesn't find yes. out. Because that's just good. That's just. <sighs> you got it. I'll hit you up as soon as I find out. And Joel, I just want to say I know this case. I mean, Charmaine means a lot to you. I can see that, and I wished other people cared as much as you did. <laughs> Maybe I cared too much. It's better than not caring at all. I don't want you to feel obligated to do anything for me just because I'm more senior. Joel, I want to do this. Trust me, if I ever feel uncomfortable, I'll let you know. Who knows? Maybe you're on to something. I just feel like her life shouldn't end up as some unnamed, unwanted black woman. So let's make sure it doesn't. Hey, I'm pulling up to the precinct now. I'll call you back. I'll save your coffee for you. Thanks for agreeing to meet me so last minute. I figured you may have some new information about Charmaine Smith. Not quite, but I was hoping you can share any updates with me. You could have just called. You're lucky to catch me in the office. Calls are easily ignored, and I don't like to be ignored. <laughs> I see. I know you probably deal with plenty of cases like this, but I have a hunch that we may be missing something. You're a detective now? No, but I know how it feels to be overlooked while in plain sight. I've been on the force for a long time. I treat every case with the same respect. I also instruct any officer under me to do the same. Now, your concern for this young lady is appreciated, but sometimes it is what it is. That doesn't sound like respect to me. It sounds half-hearted. Look, we're following protocol and the investigation isn't raising any red flags. Are you saying there was no foul play? It doesn't look like it to me. How extensive is the investigation? We're looking into this case with care, but we're running into some dead ends. That's all I can say. I didn't drive here for dead ends. You're just going to keep pushing this boulder up a hill, huh? Yes, I am. Well, this is what I can tell you. She died at home alone. There weren't any signs of an intruder or signs of a struggle. No defense wounds. Again, we don't expect any foul play. We haven't ruled out drug use yet. She wasn't a drug addict. I didn't say she was. We have to lay out all of the possibilities. One of the detectives found some weed in the apartment, so we're checking to see if narcotics played a role. So a few blunts mean she's a crackhead? No, not at all. To be upfront, we didn't find any history of drug abuse. We're just trying to make connections based on what we find. <sighs> yeah, okay. Hey, I'm not the enemy here. You asked your questions. You got your answers. We can't establish the cause of death right now. You're going to need to settle with that. Thanks for your time, Detective Wallace. I would appreciate it if you kept this conversation between us. Sure. I understand. If you do find out anything else, would you mind calling me? I can do that, as a courtesy. And sorry if I came off a bit sharp. I worked really hard to make sure Charmaine could be set up to live a full life. I'm not giving up on her. I figured that out quickly. Doesn't take a detective to see that. I'm sure I'll hear from you before you'll hear from me. <laughs> Only if I'm lucky. Any news? Yeah, check this out. It looks like Prospect Heights switched owners. When? Maybe six months ago. I don't remember hearing about that. Me either. I'm in the office, so I can't speak too loud, but I don't recognize any of the names on staff or in management. Text me over the names. I'll see if there aren't any familiar people. You should hurry back. Rita was looking for you. You still got that coffee? Yeah, it's on my desk. Just slide it over to my workstation with the lid open. If someone asked for me, just say she stepped out for some creamer. I'm on my way back. Genius. I know. I'll fill you in on what Detective Wallace said later. Sounds good. Hey, Michael. Are you at work? Yeah, but I can talk. Taking a break at the moment. What's up? When's the last time you talked to Lisa? It's funny you mentioned her. I just talked to her yesterday. Oh, that's nice. How's she doing? Fine. 
still complaining about how Aunt Cynthia played the wrong number for her pick four. <laughs> it was only worth ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Have her tell it. It was worth at least a hundred thousand dollars. Ten thousand or a hundred thousand. Neither one would have made her a millionaire. Aunt Cynthia's been dead for how long? But I bet you Lisa will go to her grave cussing out Aunt Cynthia about that damn lotto ticket. <laughs> if heaven would allow it. <laughs> I should give her a call. It's been a while. I think she's off today, but brace yourself. She's also complaining about you. How she rarely sees you. And I agree. Oh, and... She wants to meet Siobhan. Mm -hmm. She wants to be in my business. But I'll give her a call. What's the number? And that's why you never let someone play numbers for you. Uh -huh. Messed up my cash flow. I told her to play 3513 straight. Somehow she mixed up the last two numbers. And the thing about it was... I played this she... number for you before. Right. Uh -huh. I could have retired by now, sitting in the cabana with a cabana boy. <laughs> you can still play the lotto. There are millions to be won. The last jackpot was seventy-two million, I think. No, I'm done playing numbers. Let's just say I'm traumatized. Thanks, Cynthia. May you rest in peace. Well, if you ever plan to play again, just slide me a couple hundred dollar bills. I don't require much. A cool five hundred will do. <laughs> Hmm, I'll think about that. I haven't heard from you in a month of Sundays, but I did hear you're dating someone, and it's serious. When can family meet her? So, but I actually called for something else. I should have known you weren't calling for casual conversation. I'm sorry. I should have been straight with you with why I was calling. Yes, you should have. Just hear me out. Michael thought I wanted your number to invite you over to meet Siobhan. Not that I wouldn't like you to meet her, but I need you to do something for me. It's really important or I wouldn't be asking. And there's no need for you to get into trouble for anything. It's to do with this young woman I placed in foster care. Charmaine Smith had just lost her mother and little baby brother. No one knew who the dad was, and I couldn't find anyone who wanted to take her in. So... I had to place her in care, and now she's dead. That's what I'm asking for. This young woman who no one even noticed was missing. What do you need me to do? There's a transitional housing called Prospect Heights. Yeah, I've heard of them. Can you find out about its recent privatization? What does that have to do with your client? I'm not sure yet. All right, all right. I'll see what I can dig up. It shouldn't take me long. We can meet somewhere public. Thanks, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Come in. Hello, Nevin. You okay? <clears throat> I've been working tirelessly for months without the proper recognition. How many nights must I prove myself to be a valued agent? I saved the president, for God's sake. Nevin. I want a promotion. Stop. And I want it now. That's not how this works. I can come back in and try again. I don't think a second attempt will help much. And why are you reading from a script? Because it worked on the Netflix movie I saw. <laughs> There's a different way to go about this. I can memorize it. If you'll let me get to page two, and if you can say these lines, I'll have the right motivation. Do you want a promotion? Yes, I would like one. How about this? During your next performance evaluation, present me with a formal request in writing, telling me why you think you deserve one. In your own words. Now, how does that sound? Much better than reading from a script. Now... Can you tell me where Joelle is? It's all about the money. Simple as that. The county is considering privatizing all of its transitional living units. When the government is broke, it needs to make up the slack elsewhere. Going private is the popular option in most places, not just here. 
So Prospect Heights is just a test case. Yeah, the county took in RFPs from three or so parties. That's typical. It's trying to avoid any more cuts even before they announce the latest round of layoffs. And at the bottom of the barrel is Charmaine. People are worried about their jobs. Elected officials are worried about votes. Folks in my office have been on edge long before this. I understand why now. Lisa, thank you. Thank you, seriously. Yeah, sure. And when do you want to meet Siobhan? We can find a time over the weekend to stop by. No need. You got what you wanted. I'm sure Siobhan's a lovely person. I'm not sure how she puts up with your selfishness, though. Marion, I hate this place. The floors are always sticky. It's like walking in a sweet factory. I thought we were going to the wine bar. Dive bars have strong and cheap drinks. Ignore the floor. Drinks are on me. Tell me what you want. Guinness. Don't you think it's a bit loud? It adds to the diviness of the bar. <laughs> you always seem so happy. Good sex will do that for you. What? Say it again? <laughs> Never mind. Hey, Christian, let me get a Guinness and a rum and coke. I was thinking about what you were saying earlier, about taking that big leap. What do you do if you're at the edge of a cliff, standing next to someone you care for, and you make that jump and the other person doesn't? My first question is, why are you jumping off of a cliff? You're missing the point. What I'm trying to say is, what if I take the big leap and everything falls apart? I want Joelle and me to move to the next stage in our relationship, but maybe this isn't the right move to get us there. To go back to your cliff analogy, if you're having doubts, then you should pack a parachute. I don't think relationships should have an exit plan. I love Joelle and I want to be with her. The L word. It's dangerous. Love always comes with doubts, even if you're married. But the best part of having a partner is that you can ask and answer those questions together. But what if all those questions lead me back to looking for an apartment? So it's either be homeless now or possibly be homeless later? Siobhan... Joelle has this knack for being a problem solver, you know. And while I was walking over here, I started wondering how much of me moving in is about fixing something or wanting to be together. I don't know, Siobhan. You won't know unless you move in with Joelle, but once you take that leap, there's no going back. But I don't want to make you into a stereotype. Stereotype? Of what? You know, wanting to get married after the second date. What did you say? <laughs> Let's get you another Guinness. Hey, Christian, bring us another round. That was Deep Shadows by Aaron Mays and Colette Cullen, directed by Christina Cassano, starring the voice talents of Dee Dee Batiste, Justice Hall, Nevada Montgomery, Leslie Ann Riley, Jordan Arredondo, Caitlin Jackson, Luis Bermudez, Julian Cerna, Lisa Savignago, and Andrew Pond. We'd like to thank everyone who supported Deep Shadows on Kickstarter, including Iris Leck, Soul Sword, Christina Kvandal, Jace Diaz, Marcel, Botin Liakos, Ella Watts, Joey Johnston, J. Xander Kittenoha, Richard Iyer, Donaldson Cardenas, Kat McKay, Jesse Casanova, and Tyler Gilbert. The support of people like you through this lockdown has made it possible for EFCT to bring these stories to life. Now, if you want to support Deep Shadows, you can do so at redcircle.com slash shows slash deep dash shadows, where you can donate directly to this series. You can become part of the investigation at Patreon at patreon.com slash EFCT, where your monthly pledge gets you exclusive access to behind the scenes content and merchandise. Wary of commitment? We understand. You can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash EFCT. 
where you can make a one-time donation, no strings attached. Your support allows EFCT to continue to highlight the works of women, BIPOC, and LGBTQ artists. Thanks for listening. See you next week.